Well, speaking of these 10th planet themes, <laughs> let's keep going right into the UFC. And we have a 10th planet fighter who's going to be fighting for the interim belt. One Kelvin Gastelum yeah. versus another Nigerian contender for the belt. Is that next month? Is that April? It's April. They're come, okay, they're coming so fast and heavy, we don't even have time to <laughs> like keep track of what's... We'll get ready. The Nigerian Nightmare became the first African to win in the UFC. Kumar Usman at 170 pounds. Now we have Israel, the style better out of Sanya, versus 10th planet warrior Kelvin Gastelum. How do you see that fight? What do you think about their different styles? Uh, how do I see that fight? I think that it's either going to be a Gastelum KO because there's going to be some cocky shit. I'm on the feet right. or on the ground? On the feet. I Interesting. In kind of like the same way I predicted, or I mean, not wrongfully predicted, but Jeremy Stevens and Zabit, which was that sometimes some cocky kicks, some cocky you know footwork, and leaving your hands down, and then if Kelvin can get inside with his boxing and land, because Kelvin's got like knockout power now at one eighty five. Yeah. He didn't have it at one seventy. I don't know. It's down to what you say about weight cutting, but at one eighty five he does. And if he gets inside, he can probably catch Israel. And Israel has been knocked out before. In kickboxing, hasn't been kicked it, knocked out in MMA. Been a while, but yeah. And so I could see that happening. I could also see another um, decision win by Israel or another, uh, you know, TKO on the feet. I see it similarly. I would give a recent analogy of a fight that's fresh in my mind. That's JDS versus. Derek the Black Beast uh, Lewis. I don't know if I would compare those guys. I would them. compare them because I think the Black Beast and Kelvin have similar knockout power. I think it relies upon critical hits, which is language from video games we grew up on. And I think Or that, significant strikes, whatever you want to use. Or significant strikes, yeah. But sometimes I think they use the word significant strike looser than I would. Mm -hmm. I'd say a critical hit is one of those one out of a hundred shots mm -hmm. that is KO power, whereas mm -hmm. a significant strike is just one that don't deals you feel damage. Like, don't you feel like you're, oh, it's a little bit underrating to Kelvin's wrestling? Kelvin has a lot more wrestling than... No, 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 no. I think Kelvin's wrestling is great. He's also really high level in 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, yeah, so which is how we segue into this. However, I think he's more interested in proving himself as a striker from how I've seen him fight. Well, how does I he... think when he's forced into a bad situation, he uses his wrestling and his Jiu-Jitsu. But how does his his um, game plan and go. I haven't, you know, I've watched a lot of Kelvin's fights. Maybe like, no. Honestly, three, if it was like, Eddie directly coaching no, him, I would say that Eddie would coach him to use his wrestling and jujitsu to take him down because I've seen a lot of his commentary and he's more interested in low risk to get maximal reward. But his direct coach is actor Victor Davila, who's the co-producer of, of the EBIs and the CJJs. And I don't know his full fight philosophy. I also don't know how that interacts with Kelvin. I love how he coaches him in Spanish, though. Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's a couple things about. It's actually like in the the world in the world right now because, and that is the how fighters come into fights. Like they come in one way, and then there's the fighters who react by when they get hit in the face that goes out the window, and they go back to their instincts. The planning, yeah. And then there's the guys who stick to the game plan, even if it's not working, and maybe they stick to it too long. I'm just saying, I really haven't figured out which way Kelvin goes. I would have to know his game plan to know whether he sticks to it. I'll tell you who absolutely sticks to his game plan. That's Israel. The one slip up he had in the Anderson Silva fight is something that he's brought up in a series of interviews since. He said at one point, Anderson put his hands down and he used this as a verb, cracked me up. He said, I didn't want to Chris Weidman him. Mm. So I told him, stop doing that or why are you doing that? And he said, when I reflect back, I think I might have been held, holding back because anyone else, I would have told them, keep doing that. Mm. Or I would have said nothing and tagged them up. So yeah. when he's retroactively looking, he said he had to look at it three years down the line. But that's interesting because other than that step up, I think he stuck to the plan all the way. He could have been baited a few more times, but he, he wasn't. He stuck to his plan and won a decision match against Anderson calmly and tactically. I think he I can think do that Anderson against Kelvin, mm -hmm. but if Kelvin wants to take him down and submit him, I think he will. So wait, you want to be bold enough to give a prediction? Yeah. If they choose to just no, if, strike just each other. what you think. I think they're going to choose to just strike each other. And I think Israel's going to just 
piece him up and frustrate him the whole time. Do you think it's a decision or a finish? I think it's going to be a decision. I, I don't think he gets close enough to Kelvin because if he gets close enough, and the closer he gets to Kelvin, the greater the risk there is. One of the things we didn't talk about is the metrics disparity, which we've talked about in other matches. Yeah. He's way taller and, yeah. and got a better reach than Kelvin. Yeah. So I think he keeps his distance. But that's because gonna be... if Kelvin closes the distance, it's going to be over for Israel. It's going right. to be night-night or take you to the ground. Right. And that's what he doesn't want. The thing is, Kelvin is like, the, the thing, it could backfire on Kelvin too if rushing in for a takedown or rushing in to get into boxing range. You rush in on Israel, you can catch a leg to the face, you know, that's true. Kelvin on the way in. That's true. Yeah, you know, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch, but. Um, Same card Max Holloway versus Dustin Poirier. A fight that know. Dustin won the last time in a decision in Max's first fight. Yeah. But How Max, do you think Max this one Max goes? Was, I think, it's been a long time. Max, I think, was like 21. Way before he was a champ. Like, before he even lost to McGregor. I don't even think Max is like... Max grew out of this weight class, in my opinion. Like, he was a You real, mean the 45 class? He was a real... Yeah, that's what I mean. He was a real... Because they're fighting at 55. Yeah, he was a 145er at the beginning. As a 21-year-old scrawny guy. But something happens as you age where you're just like... You lose your scrawniness. I don't know if it's just working out or getting older or whatever it is. Like, he has a hard time making that weight. And I think now that he's at 155, and now that he's got eight years in the UFC, I don't know how many years it is now, I'm close to it, six years, six to eight years, he is a different different animal. And I know people say that about Dustin. Dustin they say, after the Michael Johnson fight, You loved him. You raved to me about him. I learned uh, about him when he beat if Justin they had, Listen, if they had... Like the NBA most improved player every year, or they gave yeah. them, they probably have some sort of award. Helwani probably does, or whoever. But the Dustin Poirier yeah. goes from strength to strength. He's like moves up, and he get, he hits a new limit every time he fights. He's like gets way better at everything. He badass at. Twitter profile. He's in a gown with a black belt. I love that. <laughs> That'd be I my Steve, that. bro. That's my I Steve. Haven't seen that. But he just like he's good standing. He's good grappling. He's good. Everywhere and he's gotten so much better than what he was, but I I still think Max is on the. Do you think team. Dustin tries to take Max down or tries to strike with him? Everyone that tries to takes Max Max down fails. I haven't seen it happen. So do you think he time. tries? I think that or Dustin, he's confident in striking. So and watching the Gagey fight, Dustin swung with the, with Gagey. You know, you would think that you don't swing with Gagey, and he swung with Gagey and he won. So he's gonna say, I'm not scared of the Max hallway pressure, but Max does not. Box like other people in the UFC, except Tony Ferguson. No, even Tony. <laughs> Tony throws way more kicks, and more yeah, weird yeah. shit. Max is probably the most technical. I thought you just meant in pressure style. No, that's what I mean. Pressure, yeah. and super technical pressure. Like he's on you. He doesn't yeah. let you breathe. It strikes coming. I love like that. Endless cardio, but like that. accurate strikes. Some people have endless cardio and they're throwing fucking everywhere, but these yeah. are just right on. Them. Do you think he has more or less cardio as he gets bigger? Sometimes when you weigh more, it's it's harder to move around. Yeah, but, he's but also less weight. you get more hydrated. Yeah, he's cutting less weight. So what do you think? I think um, that first few punches from one fifty five yeah. takes are going to be a little bit heavier than he's used to, but I think the pressure and pace. I think Dustin is great, and I think it's going to be a great fight. And probably going to be late. Probably a fourth round, a fifth round finish. But just like he broke Ortega, he's going to break Dustin. You think he and then him. people are going to start talking about he's going to be a double champ. People are going to start talking about Max. I think he's trying to get all his licks back. If he beats Dustin, I think his next fight is against Conor. You could, you could make it. I bet you. you Conor for the yeah, title. You could make an argument that that fight like, then becomes a real thing. You know, it becomes like, like because then the hype train for Max is at the level yeah. where it can be right there. Right? I honestly And I think he'll see that. destroy Conor as well. If he beats Dustin... I would love to see him fight Connor for the title, and I'd love to see Khabib. Connor for what title? The interim title? No, because if Max beats Dustin, Maybe he's no. going to fight Khabib. I'd like to see them strip Khabib. <laughs> strip Khabib. I love it. Listen, oh listen I know it's crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but just listen. That, man. I want to see them strip Khabib so that Khabib could fight Tony at 155. Just for the people's champ belt? And yes, <laughs> we'll all know. We all know that. And, and Connor's not going to play. He's, he's playing games with Cowboy right now because he's not put in the main event slot. It makes so, perfect sense. So, so that's not let him fight the winner. If 
Holloway wins, let Connor fight him, so he gets both of his licks back. I mean, that puts him in the same boat as GSP, his lick back too. who got his lick back against Matt Serra, yeah. and who got his lick back against Matt But Hughes. I'm saying, even the Dustin is the same storyline. Because That's Dustin true. has also lost to Connor. And the difference game. would be that Holloway gets two, lick back, two licks back. Right, right. No, I think that... And then the winner of that versus the winner of Tony versus Khabib, that will be... Oh my god! I think that, that, oh that's like a, that's like a dream scenario. Oh my god! That's the more all violence dream. Oh like what's god. really gonna happen is probably gonna be Max versus Khabib, and Tony's gonna get effed and maybe move up to a bigger weight class because like they're just freezing him out. Hey yeah. man, I think Tony could clean out the one seventies too. I'd love to see it, man. Listen. You talk about Funk. You want to see Funk versus Funk? I want to see Ben Askren versus Tony Ferguson at one seventy. Oh my! That's god. Funk versus. Why funk. are you crazy? Why are you like this? Why? Listen. That's all the funk. That's where the funk is, man. That's the time. weirdest fight. That's going to be an Elias Theodore fight. It's going to be so weird, and it's going to end in a weird decision. I'll tell you man. that right now. Man. Where there's like eight strikes thrown. It's going to be a weird fight. I don't think there'll be eight thrown, bro. I think they're going to swing at each other. For eight lands. Maybe. <laughs> Big Ben trying to grab him, and he just rolls and tumbles. Tumbles away. It would be a fun, phenomenal match, bro. I think it would have fireworks. it would have viewers. If if anything, it'll have viewers. Yeah. I don't know how good it'll be, but it'll have bro. Viewers. He could do. There are a lot of good matches. But we talked. I think we talked about this right when um, the rumors of Tony going up came out. You immediately texted me and you're like, "I want to see Usman versus Tony." Yeah. Because, because he's bench pressing and Pettis, whom he just beat, is fighting Wonder Boy, who's top five. But what I'm saying, okay, and fought for the title like, twice. I think the reason why Pettis takes that fight is because Wonder Boy is not Thompson. I mean, not Usman. What? I was like, Wonder Boy is not Thompson. No, That's no, some better shit, no, bro. <laughs> Wonder Boy is not Usman, size wise. They're different fighters. Like, okay, Wonder Boy stays. Lean. You don't think Wonder Boy can beat Usman? Uh, probably not. I think it would be very similar to the Cold. I mean, the Tyron fight. With, with They're different people. fighters. Usman comes in your face. Yeah, no. he's the the, the but, wrestling you know, version you of Max know, Holloway. You know in terms of pressure, like, no, but yeah, it's not Max Holloway. That's, that's the difference. It's a, no, but in terms of pressure, yeah. he uses wrestling like Max Holloway uses his boxing. Yeah, and but the thing is, Thompson is probably one of the best in the entire world. At, and some people think it causes boring fights, but distance management. I think if you understand the fight game, you can appreciate that. He is style. distance management. Darren Till couldn't find him, or you know, like, and he's had fights with Robbie Wall. He's had fights with Tyron Woodley, where Tyron had trouble finding him, like getting yeah. to him. And I think that like would be really effective against a guy like Usman. If you can keep getting away from him, just fire from distance. But I think that they're completely different fighters, and Tony would be much more successful against a Stephen Thompson than he would a Kamaru Usman. Just because you know, he's a man who takes shots, he's gonna get wheel kicked by Thompson. No, but I, whereas Usman just takes him down, where Tony does his BJJ. No, but what I'm saying is more tied to size. And I was talking about this that, and you disagree, and I love it. The philosophical differences, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with your point entirely. Is the smallest weight class you can make for me? doesn't determine that that's the weight class you fight in, but that determines your size for in my eyes, right? So I'm not saying that just because Tony could make 145 that he's a 145-er, but in my head... Has that he made 145? He says he could make it. But has he? I don't know. He technically hasn't made it, I don't think. But he can make it. He says he can make it. So I'm thinking, okay, if a man can make 145, I'm thinking that's like around your lowest point. Usman couldn't even make I think Usman would struggle with 65 if they created it. I think that works as a general rule, but I think individuals show that that's otherwise. So I think anyone I think at with the right techniques could cut better. Sure, I think the example at 70, I gave though, is, hold on. I think well, that uh, Usman is a D2 wrestler. Sure, but I'm saying... Tyron's D1. On paper, that means that Tyron means is nothing. better. That means nothing. So I think the weight cutting means nothing. No, I... I because it's about technique, weight cutting technique. No, because you could have a talent in D2... Or Juco wrestling that's a far better wrestler than the D1 guy that's really And you can have people who cut weight really well. Right, but don't. size is not something Like you were telling me earlier, Nate, size is not Nate Diaz you doesn't cut a lot sure, for Sure, size you don't learn. I mean, size is not something you learn, is my argument. You can learn something else. Size you can't learn it. But people cut weight differently. I, I, I'm better. not just saying the weight issue. I'm saying cutting weight is not my issue. Oh, what are you size, saying? reach, length, bigger. Usman is a bigger dude than Tony. 
is my argument. And that I think that in the ring, Usman will be of the far bigger guy. How do you think that that fight plays out? Mm, I think that You'd Usman, be if Usman he gets will go. Out. They'll they'll start striking at first. Usman will wear a couple hits, go for a takedown. Tony will invite the takedown because he's a former wrestler. He doesn't care if he gets taken down. He loves BJJ. He's like, bring it. And then he's going to get stalled like Tyron did. And it's going to be Tony sitting on the bottom, fighting back, stall, decision, Usman win. So if Usman goes for the takedown and Tony darces him, are you shocked? Mm, marginally. Marginally? Yeah. I can, respect I, it. I can see it happening, but I'm you like, can see oh, it okay, happening. Right. There's a dark specialist, baby. <laughs> I Talking know. going back to the ABCC guys, Edwin Najibi on the BJJ Fanatics podcast said that when RDA brought him in for his fight against Tony Ferguson, mm -hmm. for two months straight, he just had him practicing darces. Right, because he was worried <laughs> about the Tony darces. No, speaking of the the Gracie Baja guys, I was actually thinking about this earlier. We had a Gracie Baja guy that trains with Najibi fight yesterday. Who's that? Was, Daniel Dariush, my fellow Kurd. Oh, yeah. Well, Although, Iran, a Syrian. A Syrian in Iran. I still have kinship. So ancient kinship. Christian. Yeah. We so closer kinship, kinship to me. <laughs> sure. But I, I still I love him for that. It's yeah, fun. yeah. Uh, he got that arm bar against... Civilization, the yeah. Against uh, Drew Dober, who's a huge one. Yeah. I haven't, he hasn't won a lot recently, right? Drew, Drew, Drew was on streak. Dariush? Benny hasn't. Benny has been yeah, hitting I mean. this. You know, he won his yeah. last fight before this one. And then before that, he hadn't won for But he also trains at Dynamics, right? With Stroof, no, the giant man who just retired. He just had Rafael Cordero, Rafael Cordero in his corner of the King's MMA. Oh, nice. So I think it's King's nice. MMA, Gracie Baja with um, Homolu, Brawl, and yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. And, uh, Some Valley Jiu Jitsu right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So he's all, he's all over it. He was a great 1 8 in uh, LA, and he got that win. And I was thinking about that just because you mentioned uh, his teammate. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a good connection, and it's a it's a good way. Last time uh, you on my case for not reading these wonderful people in Farsi. So for us to end on a on a great Persian victory is a great way to end this. Unless you have any other final thoughts. I feel like we I feel like we can't do that because I think we completely ignored what's coming this weekend. What's this weekend? You didn't give me your thoughts on Tel Masio. Oh man, I mean. I almost want to say my thoughts after. I saw this really interview that they had with um, Dan Hardy. Mm -hmm. They all sat at the same table and they were polite, but they're also shit talking each other. And I was thinking in my head, this could go either way, man. Jorge Masvidal is a veteran, but he also just came off of this weird Hispanic survivor type series where he was I in the was jungle for wilderness. I thought that was just for No, Romero. he did it before Romero. And what? then Romero just went down. What's he was there for like that? 13 weeks, bro. He's like predicting what season or what week that Romero is going to lose. So I don't think he's honestly that focused on fighting, but I also think he's a natural fighter. Listen, he's game branch. <laughs> so I'm not sure. And I think that this man, Till, is huge for the weight class and I think he's phenomenal at Muay Thai, mm -hmm. but I have a sneaking suspicion for all the shit talk we're seeing them talk, mm -hmm. I think Jorge Masvidal is not going to brawl him. I think he might take him down like that Paul Daly MVP match wow. we saw. I think he shocks yeah. the world because Tyron Woodley showed the formula. Yeah, you know, I think that could happen, but I also was thinking, you know, Darren Till is doing this whole thing where he's overlooking, you know, Masvidal. This is just his placeholder fight yeah. to get to